Hello and welcome. My name is Alexander. And in this video, we're going to go over the 3D MID capabilities in Altium Designer. Now, with this new capability comes a new document file type, and that is the 3D PCB. To add that to a project, just right click on your project, select Add New to Project, and then select your 3D PCB. Altium will prompt you to select a step or IGS part file. We'll press OK and select our step file. Now we'll give it a moment to load. There it is. And now that we have our new model in our um, project space, we can start to select uh, components. I'm sorry, we can start to place components and traces to route them all together. So this is going to act as our board. We're not going to use this board. That was just an example to see how easy it is to, to bring a model in. We're going to use uh, this right here. So we have our board. What's next? What's next is to bring in components. That can be done with manufacturer part search panel or even the components panel. All you have to do is just click and drag. And you'll notice as I'm moving this component along my board, it's changing its orientation to always have contact with the board. So it's here you'll notice it's rotating and the pads always keep contact. This, of course, is not the most, let's say, it's not the best way to bring in components. The best way is to do what you normally would do, just like in a two-dimensional project, which is generate an ECO. This is schematic driven, so we have everything in the schematic. All we have to do is import these changes. So we're bringing in the components, the nets, the pins, everything. Let's execute those changes, and here we have our components. Now all we have to do is, just like before, is click and drag. If we press the space bar, we can rotate the components. And let's just start to place these on here. I'm just kind of arbitrarily put the, putting these components on the board. I don't know if this is the most efficient way, but it's what we're doing right now. And as I mentioned before, you can place these on flat or curved surfaces. So here we have our components on our board. Um, they don't look very clean, so we want to clean this up a little bit, maybe you know, align these components and these ones here so we have maybe nice straight lines for when we're routing or just nice symmetry. So to do this, we can do it in two ways. We can use a sketch and also a grid. We'll talk about both of them. First, let's talk about the grid. So we'll go to the Properties panel, and we'll want to click on Enable Grid. You, if you want, you can change the sizing and also the plain kind. This looks good to me, so I'm just going to leave it as is. And now we need to change or move our components so they're aligning. All you have to do is click and drag, and when you do, the center body or the center of that component will snap along the grid and also the intersections or the vertices of this grid. And to help visualize this, we'll turn off the component bodies. I did that by pressing the three key and you'll notice that my green cursor is snapping along and to the vertices of this grid. I will do the same thing for this component here. And also might as well do it for these components for R1 and R2. Actually, let's do it on the curve just to make things a little bit more interesting. OK, so now the component bodies are snapped to the grid, but it's not looking too good because the uh, they're not oriented correctly. We need to rotate these. We can rotate them in the properties panel, or we could also use this handlebar here. 
And this handlebar, handlebar is accessed by clicking on the component. And just like with the center of the component body, this also snaps along into the vertices of uh, the grid. There we go. And we'll do the same for these components. And again, if you would like, you can turn off the, uh, the 3D bodies to get a better visual visualization of what you're doing. There we go. And that is how we can use the grid to align our components. There's other components, but I think you get the idea. So what do you do if you have a sketch? Well, let's go over that right now. First, let's turn off our grid so we can better see the sketch. Um, actually, before we bring in the sketch, let me tell you what I'm talking about. So what is a sketch? Well, in uh, your mechanical tool, what you can do is draw a sketch and then project that onto a three-dimensional body. And then what you can do is export this sketch and bring that into Altium Designer. So that is exactly what we did. So if we go to View, Show Sketches, you can see that now we have our sketch showing. So I'm trying to find an interesting example here. Um, you know what, this is fine. What we can do is again, just like with the grids, we can click and drag our components, <coughs> excuse me, and it is following the sketch lines and also snaps to the intersection of these lines. So there we go and we have a straight line here. So that is aligning with a sketch and also a, uh, a grid. <clears throat> so now that we have our components placed, let's go ahead and start to uh, route. Actually, let me do one more alignment, sorry, placement, and I'll use this component here. I'm going to snap it to this intersection here. And let me do this. Let me rotate it one more time. I think this will help for my upcoming example of routing. So um, when you route, you can place arbitrary uh, routes. You can just go to the route menu and pr press interactive routing or control W. Click on your pad and start to uh, route. So like I said, arbitrary path, you can do that. Here you go. It's an ugly path, but you can do it if you want. And you'll notice it's going over the curved and flat edges of the board. If you want to make something a little bit more, let's say, precise, you can do that with sketches as well as the grid. So we know these are aligned and we have a straight line. So let's see, if we turned on our grid, we would just have a straight line that this follows. But if you want, you can follow a path. So if you want, you can just follow the straight lines of this path. Actually, that's not gonna be a good idea <laughs> since we're gonna run into this other uh, pad here. But you could do something you know, maybe like that, create a 45 degree angle and align yourself 
<clears throat> to this path here. And the path also works for, um, for curved surfaces, or I'm sorry, curved sketches as well. So let's take a look at that. We're going to connect these two pads here. We'll enter into interactive routing mode. Let's just click here. And then something I want to show is When you place a trace, there it is. I think my the entry angle here was kind of messed up. You know what? Let's just do it again, just so we get a good, uh, a good trace. So you can have the trace automatically follow the sketch. So as soon as I get close to this sketch here the trace will automatically realign. So you could get off it if you want, or all you have to do is get close to the sketch and it will uh, snap into place here. So if you want, you can follow, or, oops, shouldn't have uh, clicked out of it. Sorry to do this one more time. Let's just not talk when we do it. There you go. It's following the path here. So you can follow a sketch path. And also the grid. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll enable our grid. Let's turn off the sketch here. And let me just snap these over here. So what I can do, click on my pad. I could follow this trace. And then if I want, even make a, like a, a 45 degree I guess that's maybe not 45, but still you can angle it out to your other pad. Same thing with this. We snap to the grid here. If you want, you can create a very good 45 degree angle by snapping to these vertices. And there you go. It's very easy to create nice traces. Um, either following a curved path on a sketch or uh, maybe an arbitrary path. You can follow a sketch as we saw earlier and also follow grid lines and make very nice 45 degree angles. So that was component positioning and routing. Um, one thing I do want to mention now that I've zoomed out is when you're routing, it does help to turn off, well, it can help to turn off the 3D bodies just if you want to be able to route underneath them or see where you're routing underneath a body. So that is helpful. The next thing I do want to mention is placing some copper pores or a solid region of copper. So if you want, uh, go to the place menu, select, what was it, uh, solid region. And just like with routing or placement, this cursor will snap along the grid and also to the vertices. And you can start to, oh, that wasn't against the vertice. It's flat. You can start to place a copper region. There you go. So we have a copper region. This also does work on the uh, the curved regions of the board. So let's go ahead and show that. There's no funny business here. And again, I'm snapping 
to my grid. So we get a perfect rectangle here. And you're, you're going to notice that this is on the curved surfaces, not just the flat ones. And that works on the grid and as you've probably guessed, also works on the sketch. So let's go ahead and show that. So we have our sketch. And you know what, let me do this. Let me go ahead and get rid of these components and also this sketch here. I wanna show that you can place a sketch and follow along, I'm sorry, place a solid region following a sketch, just like we saw with the routing, but I think it is pretty cool. So if we start to place this, uh, the solid region here, you'll notice this green line is following the sketch. Actually, I misclicked, my bad. Let's do that one more time. So again, we're snapping to these vertices. And you'll notice that I'm snapping to the uh, the sketch. So I can make perfect curves following the sketch that my mechanical engineer did or that I did in SolidWorks. There we go. I messed up the, the last leg of it, but I, I think you guys get the, the idea. Um, so we can make solid regions on our board very accurately. And the last thing I want to talk about is outputs. So we can easily output this data. All we have to do is go to file, uh, export 3D MID. We'll call this, um, demo underscore pcb 3 d dot step. Let me copy this location. And it has been done. Um, one thing I do want to mention when talking about exporting and uh, outputs is that this, our exportation is perfect for the LDS process or the laser direct structuring process. Also, we do have some default and advanced settings. If you go to the documentation, which is what we're looking at um, now, you can uh, read more about it and make those adjustments. Also, if we look at this, um, our pick and place file is geared towards the 3D MID process. So it is in three dimensions. So your X, Y, and Z, and also the orientation. So it knows where in 3D space, or we tell them uh, the pick and place machine where in 3D space to place these components and how. And we did output this. So I do wanna take a look at our viewer real quick. So if you go to open, click on this demo, which is what we just made. And here we are in our 3D viewer. You can see our copper regions, our board, our traces, pads, everything. If we get rid of the board, we can see just the copper regions we placed moments ago. So very cool. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.